Welcome back to DXB Today. Now, we've all heard of driverless cars to get us from A to B, but how do we feel about driverless cars that are actually going to race? To talk all about that, we say hello to Tom McCarthy, Executive Director at Aspire Mags. Thank you so much for joining us, Tom. Very welcome. So, that's going to be the first obvious question. It's the, what does Aspire do? Yeah, Aspire is part of the Advanced Technology Research Council in Abu Dhabi. And our main job is to drive the development of new technologies that can be used for the diversification and the transformation of the economy of Abu Dhabi and the UAE. So there's the Advanced Technology Research Council is comprised of three different organizations. Aspire, the program management arm, the Technology Innovation Institute, which has 10 research centers with almost a thousand researchers working across those. And then we have Venture One, whose job it is to commercialize and scale up the technologies that we develop through our work. Ah, so your marketing side of things, because you do driverless cars, right? Right. And driverless racing. So how, how do you market that and promotion and push and promote that? Like, what is, okay, what is okay. that? So what we're doing with autonomous racing is, on the one hand, we're starting with the science. So we've got autonomous robotics uh, and AI, and then we take extreme sports. And we think that you can put the two together to actually involve people in enjoying sport on the one hand, but pushing the frontiers of science on the other. So we're not trying to compete with Formula One. Formula One is something different. You've got a human in a car you saved Sultan. Human you know it. You're all right. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to ask him. <laughs> but but, but for, from our perspective, I guess, if, if you look at it this way, the cars we drive today have the ability to do things and negotiate the roads that maybe is up here. Mm -hmm. And the average driver has yeah. an ability that's down uh, here. You know? So you're driving along the motorway, something awful happens in front of you. The average driver is likely to do something that's going to spin you into that crash. But the car, driven properly, could avoid it. Imagine if you're driving along like that and a Formula One driver by your side taps you on the shoulder and says, it's okay, I can take you from here. Mm. So what we want is to be able to put in autonomous capability that can actually automatically take over and protect you then. But it's a long road to go to that. The science is actually quite far ahead of what consumers are willing to accept in their cars. As you know, if you're driving a car with lane assist and all of a sudden it feels like yeah. that, people don't like it. They switch it off. So our belief is that you've got to get people involved to see how the autonomy is being developed in real time. Because people have to accept it and want it in their cars if the producers are going to actually invest and put it into the car into the future. And the percentage of people who are pro-autonomy? The percentage of people who are pro-autonomy. Yeah. I guess it's not so much the percentage of people who are pro-autonomy, but it's the willingness of the consumer surveys that showed that over the last number of years that people's willingness to accept autonomous components in cars has actually gone down and that's affecting investment in the industry so we're developing an app and uh, a capability to actually jump in a ghost car and so while the real race is happening you can actually be racing against those autonomous cars but the other thing we felt is that you know this is not about driverless where you see driver's taxis going around very slow. For decades to come, most of us are going to see autonomy in cars that we drive ourselves. So this is about enabling these cars to be safer. So in order to actually have something that's exciting, we thought that we'd get the fastest cars that you could possibly get. So the cars we have have been used and, uh, in the Super Formula series that just concluded at the end of October in, uh, in Japan. And there's only one faster car in the world than there is, and that's Formula One. We couldn't get the Formula One. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the, the car is developed by this superb uh, Italian manufacturer called Dallara. And, uh, you know, Dallara, every Indy car that's raced is produced by Dallara. Every Formula One car has some component that's come from Dallara. And Dallara agreed to let us take their beautiful car and actually adapt it and put in this, um, in this, uh, this autonomous component. So the Super Formula 23 will be launched next year as the Emirates Autonomous Vehicle 24. So with, it's a super formula adapter with our autonomy stack. What we take out is the driver, and instead we put a computer sitting right in the middle. And there's two things the computer does. It sends instructions to the, the brakes and the, and the steering. We 
we develop very specific actuators for acceleration, for braking, for turning. And then on top of that, we have a whole lot of what we call the eyes and ears of the car. So we have GPS, we have cameras, we have radar, we have LiDAR, and all that information is fed into the computer. Speaking of all that information, I don't know if I understood most of it. Sultan, you're the, you're the other car enthusiast. To be honest, how do you feel like, about this? It's amazing to hear like how technology has come like in 2023 and 2024, like the AI. Um, I'm wondering, driverless racing car, yeah. How are you guys gonna take it to the future and make it as a championship? Is there gonna be drivers driving behind the uh, screens or how are you guys gonna take it forward? Okay, well the, well, the drivers are the, are the coders, the people doing the software. So every car is going to be identical. Like Formula One, every single aspect of the car is identical. We brought 10 teams from all over the world um, and uh, these teams will, their job is to take the physical car and the stack we give them and write the programs to get those cars to actually race around the track. So now it's so whoever writes the best program sort of is the best is car. the fastest basically. The, the the best program is a necessary condition, but they also have to be able to translate it to be able to work on the track. So they need to have that motorsport skill as well. I mean, currently the best teams are European teams. They come from Italy and Germany, but we have now teams coming from China and Singapore, North America, from other countries, all trying to try to improve to perform like them. So the, 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 the actual hero now is, is the coder and we bring that out front because it's amazing to go into a garage. You know when you see mechanics working on cars, you see whiteboards with kids doing, man, no, no, with, <laughs> with pencils, they're doing math on the board and say, how do we get this code to be up? But think about it, you know, most of us can't imagine being able to sit in a Formula One car and be the racer. Can you imagine a kid today that could never be a sports person in general, but thinking, hey, I could be a coder and yeah. I could yeah, be, definitely. I, I, I could be racing my car around the Yas Marina circuit. Yeah, we need to highlight some of these people and just uh, stick around. We're going to continue this conversation. Um, but now I want to talk about our spotlight and uh, the founder of one of the amazing businesses here in Dubai. Uh, she is absolutely incredible. Uh, she took the simple book of offers um, into a lifestyle e-commerce app that has changed the voucher business in the region. A leading provider of the buy one, get one free offers. Let's hear from Donna Benton from The Entertainer. I'm Donna Benton, the founder and the CEO of The Entertainer. The Entertainer is a buy one, get one free model where we provide two for one offers to the best restaurants, cafes, salons, attractions, hotel accommodation, and fitness throughout the GCC. I'm not sure it's a problem, but what we like to do is make the unaffordable affordable for everybody. The milestones would have to be one of the exits, in 2018 when I grew the company with my team for 17 years and then I did an exit in 2018. Look, in a business there's always challenges. I'll be here for the next 10 minutes if I run through them all. But there are many, many challenges. One of them was when I first launched The Entertainer, people thought it was too good to be true. Our long-term goal is obviously to grow top line, bottom line, and the countries we're in to go deeper and have more quality. Look, I love Dubai. Dubai has such a great vision. It's the perfect city for entrepreneurship. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to do it anywhere else. I actually love that Dubai is a melting pot for different cultures along with the safety aspect of Dubai. I really love that I have children, so I love the safety side of things. I love there's always something to do in Dubai. Um, and it's just got such a good vibe. It's cosmopolitan and, you know, Dubai's growing in so many aspects. And I've been there for that journey and, you know, I just can't fault it. I would take one of my friends, I would use an entertainer offer, and I would do a four hour spa treatment in, with a massage and a facial. I mean, the entertainer is probably one of the most famous things in Dubai. I feel like we just heard from a celebrity right now. But let's talk about the buzz around town. Do, ah, what have you got for us? 
So I love a bit of AI. So let's have this discussion. Will algorithms and machine learning replace racing leagues like the Formula One? As Abu Dhabi has launched the world's largest autonomous racing league that will have AI powered self-driving vehicles capable of reaching 185 miles hour. The inaugural race will be held on the 28th of April on 2024 at the famous Yas Marina Circuit in Abu Dhabi, where 10 teams across the globe will compete against each other. Guys, Tom, I have to go to you on this. Tell us your thoughts. Well, I think we don't start off to replace Formula One. We sit oh. side by side. But what we're doing is creating a new sport. We're taking an extreme sport of excitement and noise. Obviously, people ask those things like, did you want to put an electric uh, motor in this? We said, no, we wanted the real sound and bang of, 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 of the motor car. But we also wanted to bring science to life. You know, I mean, this is real time science occurring. Uh, up to now, it's only been <coughs> it possible for two cars to race around the track autonomously. We aim to push that boundary so that we will see three and four cars being able to race simultaneously. But we also have a series of sprint races that will be, you know, you will see more cars coming down the straight um, uh, in, a, in a shorter time than you will see in Formula One, creating a lot of excitement. But in, in addition, I think, you know, obviously we're a lot about pushing science forward and education forward, getting people greater awareness of AI and how it can be used for a positive. But it's also important to, to involve younger people. Mm. So we have a, a STEM competition where we will have one eight size cars that will be raced by high schools against each other wow. around the car track and they will be raced autonomously as well. And uh, so what we want to do is we want to stimulate those kids to be interested and ultimately then to say, hey, when I go to college, I want to do engineering. I want to work in these type of industries yeah. because you know this could be my route to being involved in sport but even if they don't get involved in sport, they will be involved in pushing ahead the technological developments that will be for the benefit of all of us here. In the it country. is, I mean, going back to the question of will AI replace, I think we always ask when it comes to AI, will it replace, will it replace, will mm. it replace? And my question is, did computers replace the chess master? They didn't, people uh, love to see yeah, people and it's a big part of F1. Sultan, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like mind blowing, you know, so that's the question. So is it going to replace racing drivers in the future or not? Well, I like I what's a separate league for it. I like what you said though. You said earlier though that there's there's a there's a competition where people can actually race against the the robot and that's mm -hmm. that's that's fantastic. It's called Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I've played that. Yeah, but uh, absolutely. I mean, look, this is going to be online first. Mm -hmm. And what we really envisage is a situation where Instead of you having to go to a simulator where, you know, it, it, there's a simulation race that has occurred in the past, you're actually anywhere in the world able to get into this race through a ghost car and actually race a car that's happening in real time. Wow. You know, so that's it's, right. it's a different experience. Well, th that's exactly that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is the man. Sultan's face is lit up. It's the fastest, <laughs> <laughs> you're the fastest in the region. You're being very humble, man. Like, like you've, you've, you're the fastest driver in the region for how many years? Uh, three years. Three years. Yep years and the 27th fastest in 2022 wow. and um, let's see what's gonna happen next year and the end of the year so well Sultan Tom I'm sure you're gonna have a lot to talk about and we have loved talking to you right here on DXB, DXB today thank you so much for coming in thank you for having thank us you. now Lane Dua and I are gonna be hanging around because we've got more for you but what's coming up on the show so I'm going to get in conversation with Chef Pierre Gagnier, one of my favourite restaurateurs and Oscar winning movie that he's now in. Plus a special performance from our favourite live music venue in the city. Stay with us.